you know, we get caught in the matrix to where we think we're supposed to have all these things. And if we don't, then we're a failure. In other words, how many times have you looked at someone else that you went to high school with or you went to college with? You know, you're, you're, you're cruising through LinkedIn and you see that some, one of your fraternity brothers or shorty sisters, they're the senior vice president of a ABC company and they're crushing it. Or they've become a partner at, at Bain or, or Boston Consulting Group. They've just got some, or Deloitte, just they got just this unbelievable job or they're doing private equity. And you remember back to whenever you were in college and you think to yourself, they, they were kind of like, you know, ass clowns in school. And yet here they're doing so much better than me. And look, you know, as well as I do that, like Theodore Roosevelt said, that comparing yourself to someone else or comparison is the thief of joy. There is no equity into comparing yourself to someone else. But I think it's so easy to do is because the matrix has shown us what it says is success, right? This plastic world of name brands, big cars, big houses, cool trips, you know, chilling in the Maldives, you know, it's, it's on our social media, which by the way, I got to tell you, I'm not telling you to get off social media. Everybody tells you to get off social media. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that, but I can tell you this. I have not been on Instagram or Facebook in the year 2024. Now, granted, I know we've only had 23 days of it, but I have 23 days. And actually, I stopped it. I think I got off of Instagram maybe, I think it was like December the 15th of last year. And I started it as a, I was just going to get off for like, till this year. I was going to like, I'm out. I'm going to focus on the holidays up through Christmas. I had both Rylan and Abby coming home. And I thought, that's it, man. I'm off. I want to be really present. I don't want to be scrolling on my phone. Guess what? I have enjoyed it so much. I don't know if I'm ever going back. I went from just deleting the apps to now I have actually logged out of Instagram. So you can't find me there. And I haven't seen what anybody else is posting. And, and I think this is a good thing because I look, again, full disclosure, I am susceptible to all the things that I'm constantly talking about, the adverse impacts of different elements of life that I constantly talk about and discuss. I am just as susceptible as anyone. You know, the Jason Wright, the improve always and always guy, has all of his things that he's got, you know, demons and and struggles and the matrix trying to suck me in and make me envious and want to have things that really mean nothing that once I'm dead and gone, they all just, you know, are sold in a garage sale or a state sale, which brings up another topic while I'm just kind of rambling on, on free, uh, you know, doing a, I guess, uh, freestyle thinking here. Have you ever gone to a big estate sale and thought of just how sad that is? I remember not too long ago, uh, I guess it was a couple years ago when uh, my dad's mom died and uh, my stepmom called me and she had, she had me on FaceTime and she's like showing me around all my grandmother's stuff and asking me if I wanted any of the stuff that was left over that hadn't gone to the other kids and you know, the, they they had selected all the, the, the different things to remember my grandmother by or whatever and then whatever was left over they were going to sell in a state sale. So she called me to kind of look around and see if there's anything that I wanted. And um, I remember thinking to myself, this is crazy. Because now that all the, all the furniture I looked at and some of the dishes and things that had been such a, they, it had been like the set, like a movie set of Thanksgiving dinners, Christmases, and just different times growing up at my grandmother's. And now they just look like props, kind of something that you'd find in an attic on Broadway somewhere, like a supply room of different props and chairs and stuff that they've used for different sets. And essentially all these possessions, that's what they've been reduced to. And, and, and I've, I've started thinking that every time I go to a garage sale, especially estate sales, because usually estate sales happen, you know, when someone's died and you go and you just pilfer through all these people's personal things. And, and then it, it just, you know, it, it's really started to make me think that, God, that's crazy that when we're dead, all of our stuff just becomes just that for once. I want to set goals to get better. What does that look like? And how do I determine what makes me better? Better at what? A better thinker? Well, what the hell does that mean to be a better thinker, that I'm better at doing math problems? If that's the goal, then God, we're really screwed because I'm terrible at math. So what is it? Well, I don't have those answers. 
that's not what today's episode is about. But I am going to tell you kind of what I came up with with the help of Tony Robbins, Jim Rome, and Carl Jung to try to decide these things. All right, so first of all, connecting Tony Robbins' concept of aligning one's life blueprint, which what is our life's blueprint? So I remember listening to an old Tony Robbins program. Um, it wasn't Awakening the Giant Within. I think it was uh, Cutting Edge. No, The Ultimate Edge, excuse me. Cutting Edge was a really cool figure skating movie from the 80s, so just a heartwarming romance about a figure skater and an old hockey player. But this was The Ultimate Edge by Tony Robbins, completely different thing. And he talked about how we all have a blueprint or, uh, of our life. That we, 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 we have this idea of what our life should look like. And whenever we're unfulfilled or dissatisfied, then that means that life, as we're living it, it doesn't match our blueprint. It's like we have the blueprints for a house that we want to build and the kitchen has been placed in the bath, I mean, in the, in the master bedroom. And so you're like, wait, wait, this is, I don't, this is a cool house. I can live in it. It gives me shelter. It gives me a lot of what I need in the house, but the kitchen is in my bedroom. It doesn't, so I'm not fulfilled. That's how we are. So, so a lot of you that are listening to this, whenever you're going through the goal setting process, first of all, take into your, into account what you determine is the blueprint of your life because your blueprint is going to involve a lot of things. It's going to involve a wife or no wife, kids or no kids, how much money you make, where's what's your geographic location as to where you live. Are you close to family? Are you close or are you off in some exotic cool location? What is your blueprint? Because here's what happens if you're not fulfilled, if you if you look at LinkedIn and start to compare yourself with your friends. And you see that they are doing things that you have not, and you feel bad about it. That means that your blueprint does not match what you thought your blueprint should be. Mm -hmm. 